Father, we thank you for this um, International Day of Prayer. We thank you, Father, that you are a God who answers prayer. Thank you that you are a God who loves your people and, in fact, who loves the whole world. We thank you for that, Lord. Father, we pray this morning that our hearts will be open to be filled with you rather than with anxiety and that we will be better equipped uh, to do what you want us to do in this world. Amen. Amen. Well, no lectern this morning. Um, I could sit down, but I kind of feel that standing up gives me a little bit more liberty to wave my arms. Um, and what we're going to do this morning, as I look at my watch, is um, we're going to look at Psalm 23. Um, psalm 23 is an incredible psalm, a beautiful psalm. And uh, I'm going to suggest that maybe we might like to uh, actually memorize that this th this psalm this week. Um, there are six verses of Psalm 23 um, and uh, that means that Monday till Saturday we could learn a verse each day. It would be something lovely we could do as a church and I think that meditating on the scripture is so important and so helpful uh, to us. When we get this word in us, we, we memorize it, uh, we pray it through, uh, we talk to God as we read it. And I want to just share a few thoughts on Psalm 23 that I think are very relevant to this time that we are living in right now. First of all, Psalm 23, verse 1. In fact, I think I'm going to read out the whole psalm to you. Maybe as I do, you might like to just... Um, has he got it here? Hold on. Here it is. Psalm 23. Um, you might just even like to close your eyes... Um, and uh, just think about these verses and really imbibe, drink in the words of this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Probably one of the most um, famous psalms of all, often sung at weddings, at funerals. Um, it's so relevant to our lives today. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I think the great thing here today is that we can fix our eyes on Jesus. For me, this has been an extraordinary week and I've been rushing around um, and sometimes I've been so occupied. In fact, yesterday, I don't think I looked at the news one time. I was so full up with the news. I've watched it so many times during the week and I reckon that I probably knew enough um, by then. Uh, but I did look at the good news and uh, one morning I went downstairs after a couple of days, uh, I think it was probably Thursday, and I got very preoccupied with all that was going on. And I just thought, I've just got to praise the Lord. And I started to sing some worship songs as I wandered around the kitchen. And before long, I found that my heart was refreshed and restored as I got my eyes back on Jesus. And that's where we need to have our eyes. This verse says, the Lord is my shepherd. That is Jehovah, Yahweh, is my shepherd. One of the translations, uh, one of the, the meanings of Jehovah or Yahweh, nobody knows quite how to pronounce it, um, is the ever-present one. 
the self-existent one, the one who has been here from eternity and yet is with us now, today, at this very moment, God is with us. Yahweh is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I used to have, uh, I used to live on a farm and we had a foreman on the farm uh, whose responsibility it was to look after the sheep. He was a hired shepherd, um, but he actually was very diligent. He cared about the sheep. And I used to join him sometimes, particularly at lambing season, at night, how very exciting as a child. I could go up to the barn uh, where the lambs were being born and he was looking after them. He held them in his arm. He gave them bottles of milk and uh, it was fun to be around them. Um, but at different times, they'd escape, they do crazy things, and uh, he looked after the sheep. But Jesus is our shepherd. And he said to us, he said, um, the, uh, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. How amazing that Jesus left heaven he came down upon this earth. He lived 30 years of hardship and obedience, making all the right choices. And at the end of his life, he offered up that perfect life to his father and he laid down his life for the sheep. And then he gave us his Holy Spirit so that we could live his life through him and we could be a demonstration of that shepherd heart to those around us. Jesus is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, this translation is a bit like the old King James. And sometimes you think, does that mean I'm not supposed to want anything? But actually it means I shall not lack anything. In fact, I think the, uh, uh, the Living Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Now there's a thought for us at this time. We need to remind ourselves that because God is our shepherd, we have everything that we need, whatever it is, he's big enough to supply and he will give us what we need. We will lack no good thing. In verse two, it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. You know, sometimes it seems at the moment that it's almost like God is making the whole of the world lie down, sit down. People don't like this self-isolation. But I think it shakes us up and makes us think, what is really important in life? What are the basic things that I really need? And it's like he's made us lie down. Other version says he let me lie down in green pastures. But actually, I think it means he makes. There was um, uh, those that have lived as long as I have will remember that the policemen were reputed to say if they were going to wanted to arrest you, they would say you can come quietly or I will apprehend you. And we have a choice in our lives whether we come quietly in obedience. And sometimes God uses difficult circumstances to apprehend us, to get our attention. And I think as Christians, we need to, to say, God, what are you saying in my life? What do you want to change? What do you want to do in me and through me? He leads me beside still waters. How wonderful that God wants to feed us. He wants to feed us on his word. We need to keep reading the Bible more and more. We need to enjoy God. We need to praise and worship. We need to experience the life of God in our own souls. He leads me beside still waters. Again, in this hectic life, we need to somehow quieten ourselves down brush away all the WhatsApp messages, all the news, everything that's invading our lives. We need to switch off and get into a quiet place more than ever. Apparently, the way that sheep are made, uh, the distance of their, their, no, their nostrils from their mouths means that unless the water is still, they cannot drink. They can't go to troubled waters and drink. The water has to be still. So let's look for that stillness in our lives. He leads me in paths of righteousness, verse 3, for his name's sake. If we will let God lead us through this wilderness, through this difficult time, then he will lead us in paths of righteousness and it will be in a way that is for his glory. I know there are people who will be very worried about their businesses, about their jobs, about their futures, but we must remember the promises of God that our lives are in his hand and hold on to those promises. 
for his name's sake. Let him lead us through this place. It's, it's easy in times like this to think I'm going to work out everything myself. I'm going to have plan A, B and C. And it's good to plan. But the Bible says the plans uh, of, of, uh, a man, uh, of a man are in his heart. But the Lord establishes his steps. In the end, he has control. And we must give him control to make this whole process easier. God is a protector, he's a feeder, he's a leader, he's a restorer and a reviver. And in this quietness, let's ask God day by day to revive our hearts. Even this morning, as you listen to this, this message, as we, we sing, as we pray, say, God, would you restore my heart? We're shaken up by these things and we're brought to a place where we realise, what do we really believe? I was talking to somebody the other day uh, who is somewhere between an atheist and an agnostic. And I just said to him, I'm not, he was worried for me actually. And I said to him, in all honesty, and I'm not trying to be religious here, I'm not afraid of death. I don't think, oh, I might die. Because this sense that I have put my trust in Jesus, he has forgiven my sins, he has given me eternal life, is deep in my heart. I don't have to work that up, but I truly believe. Jesus said, he that believes in me shall never die. What an astonishing thing that is. He that believes in me will never die. We as Christians have a message of hope for the world at this time. He's a restorer. He's a protector. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we have to remember that this is not death. This is the valley of the shadow of death. And though even we go through the most difficult circumstances, they cast a shadow all over our lives. And we've all experienced that. And many of us are experiencing that right now. And even though, and God knows what you're going through, I walk through that valley of the shadow of death. The Bible says, I will fear no evil. You know, we have a choice to make as Christians. Am I going to believe or am I going to fear? The word believe is a difficult word for people to understand. Um, but I like to think of it as trust. Usually when I read my Bible and I see believe these days, I, I, I put in trust instead. I will put my trust in God. I will put my trust in Jesus. I will fear no evil. We have to work on this anxiety. And why do we fear no evil? Because the Bible says, for you are with me. And even actually at this very moment in time, you know, there are different things happening in time at the moment. One thing is in heaven, the angels are worshipping Jesus. They are falling down before his throne and they are saying, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is our creator. Worthy is our redeemer. Worthy is the king of the nations. And they're oblivious, I guess, most of the time to, to what's going on around us. They're wrapped up in the sovereignty and the might of God. And we need to worship at this time. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. A rod was used to, to uh, fend off the enemies. And I found that, that, uh, that Jesus wants us to, to allow him to deal with our enemies. Every day he has given us to pray, Lord, deliver us from the evil one. That's in the Lord's Prayer. It's a daily prayer. And we are putting our trust in God daily. And I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my friends. I'm praying for the church. I'm praying for my neighbours. Lord, deliver us from evil. Use that rod to fend off the enemies. And the best thing we can do at this time is to stick very close to the shepherd because he has a rod with which to deal with our enemies. The word staff is a different uh, instrument and this is more like a walking stick. It's something to lean on and I am not ashamed to lean on Jesus. I want to put all my, my, my faith and my trust in him for difficult circumstances, whether they are financial, whether they are, they are plans for the future, whether they are my holidays, whether they are my children, whether it is what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Let's lean on Jesus. Let's learn to lean more on that staff. And then the picture changes to where Jesus becomes a generous host 
our good shepherd becomes a host. Verse five, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is a kind of cheeky thing, isn't it? If you're the enemy and suddenly you're, 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 you're wanting to do damage to these people. And yet God right in the middle has laid out a table for us that we can enjoy him in the midst of the trouble. You've prepared a table before me. What an amazing scene in the presence of my enemies. Let me tell you a story in the Old Testament, if I can just find this. And 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning, that's the servant of Elisha, and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? You see, the servant, he could see all the enemies surrounding them. And this was a very real and present danger to him. And he went to Elisha and said, my master, what shall we do? We are absolutely stuck. There is no solution to this problem. And Elisha said, do not be afraid. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. So the servant's thinking, what is he on about? It's just him and me and the enemy all around. But Elisha had a different vision. He saw something beyond that. And so Elisha prayed and he said, O oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. Now we have the ability uh, to pray that prayer this morning. God, if we are afraid, if we are anxious, if we are overwhelmed, we can say, God, would you open my eyes to see you, even to see the angels, to see the spiritual realm, to see the provision that he has promised. Please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire, all around Elisha. And that's, of course, where they got the name of that film from, Chariots of Fire. And then he is the anointer. And I want to just briefly talk about how God wants to bless us so much. God said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm making a covenant with you and I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. So God, as, as church, he, we belong to him. He is committed to us. He has made a covenant with us. And he is saying, I'm going to bless you. And I want you then to be a blessing to those around you. It starts to look outwards, this, this generous host. He, he then, it says in verse five, you anoint my head with oil. You see, God wants to anoint all his children. Anointing was for priests and for prophets and for kings. And the Bible says we are kings and priests. The anointing is obviously a picture of the Holy Spirit who is upon us. And he anoints us with the gifts that he has given us. Just think for a moment, what has God given me? Has he given you the ability to be generous? Has he filled your cup uh, more than others? The Bible says my cup, it says here in Psalm 23, my cup overflows. God wants us to be so full of him, so full of blessing that our cup is, is, is uh, uh, overflowing. You anoint my head with oil. So what gifts have you? Um, in this time, um, I've been able to, I've had opportunity in our street to put my name on a list to visit people. Um, uh, we have some people even older than me in the street. I can ask them how they are. Uh, there's a woman uh, a little bit older than me. Uh, uh, yesterday, I went down to Pet World uh, to get specific dog food. She's worried about her dog. And that was a, an opportunity to bless her. Um, and uh, we, we are able to de deliver food to people who are sick. Um, there's an incredible amount that we can do through WhatsApp, through just messages, through st staying in touch. A few years ago, our dear Paul um, gave um, a, a series of messages on one another. And uh, I'm not going to go through them all. But do you know there are 59 one another's in the New Testament? 59. And 14 of them just simply express love one another. Jesus said, this is my commandment that you love one another. And he is expecting us at this time to look out for one another. 
I'm going to just mention um, uh, just a, a few very quickly of these uh, one another's. First of all, it says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Well, we can't do that, can we? Uh, we can't do that online. Um, and uh, because of, of, of wanting to do this social distancing so we don't endanger people's lives, then we cannot do the holy kiss, can we? Um, or even the holy handshake. Um, but we can uh, be in touch with people just as much. One of the things is to be patient. Ephesians 4.2 says, be patient, bearing with one another in love. You know, when we get anxious, we often get angry, we get grumpy, we get edgy, we become irritable. Let's be patient with one another at this time. Colossians 3.13 says, forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Do you know there are people who have cut themselves off from the body of Christ, who are not in fellowship with their brothers and sisters. And I want to encourage you at this time to make sure that every relationship is right so that we can care for one another and be cared for by one another. Forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. And then Hebrews 3.13, encourage one another daily. This can be done in different ways. Colossians 3.16 says, teach one another. So it's not just the preachers and the teachers. We are here to educate one another. Share the things that you have found helpful online. Share the verses. Share your testimonies. Share your stories. Encourage one another. And it actually says that we should encourage one another day by day, daily. Hebrews 3.13. And then it says um, in 1 Corinthians 12.25, have equal concern for each other. So don't just be in touch with your favourite people. Why don't you think of the people in church who actually don't have many relationships or new people? Get in touch with them. How are you doing? I find that people really appreciate it. Just a little thing. I rang somebody the other day. I've never rung them before. And I just said, how are you doing? It's impossible to reach that person via WhatsApp. And so I thought, I'm just going to give them a ring. And just said, how are you doing? It's a small thing, but it means so much. And then it says, carry each other's burdens. If people are anxious, if they are worried, we can help them. Help them deal with the, some of the things that they're worried about. And then finally, James 5.16 says, pray for one another. Pray for your family. Pray with those that are with you. Unless you're self-isolating, like my son, by himself, um, then Pray for, for with people. Pray for those you can. Pray over the phone. I make a point of every conversation I have with people. If I can possibly, I say at the end, shall we just pray? And it's a blessing to do that. Pray for each other. Pray for your neighbours. Pray for those that are in need. Pray for our nation today. And so it goes on and it says, my cup overflows to our neighbour, not just to the Christians, not just to the believers, but let's have our hearts full and open to those around us. Calling people, linking people together, buying the dog food, delivering the shopping, whatever it is. My final thought is this, at the end of this wonderful psalm in verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall Follow me all the days of my life. How do you like that? It's not you following mercy, it's mercy following you. And the word mercy is one of my favourite words in the Bible. The Hebrew is hesed. And it, it is almost impossible to translate. It's so rich in meaning. It could be translated as covenant love, faithful love, the, the love that comes out of a committed relationship. And the Bible says that God's goodness and his covenant mercy will follow us. I pray for my children um, that uh, whether they are praying or not, and I know that uh, certainly in one case they are praying, um, but just because I am in a covenant with God, I believe they are part of that covenant. And so I can pray special things for them. Let's trust God. He is committed to his word. Let's start to memorize again. Let's memorize this psalm and fill ourselves with this covenant. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life or forever. Let's pray, shall we?
Father, we just uh, take this time now to still our hearts, Lord. Thank you that you lead us by quiet waters. And Lord, we want to pray that you would help us to still our hearts. Help us, Lord, to focus upon you. Even as we sing this last song now, Father, we pray that we would be absorbed in, consumed by your goodness, Lord. Would you minister to our hearts? Would you anoint us with oil? Would you teach us how to pray? The Bible says, I know that you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. Father, we pray at this time that you will help us to love one another. You would teach us how to love one another. And Father, we thank you that your word says, my cup is overflowing. It overflows. Father, we pray that we would have such a, an experience of knowing you, of faith filling our hearts, Lord, of you restoring our spirits, that our cup would overflow, that every day there would be a fresh supply of peace, a fresh supply of love, a fresh supply of joy. Lord, you said, give, and it shall be given unto you. But you also said, as you have received, so give. And we pray this will be our experience this week. We pray for our neighbours. We pray that you will give us opportunity to be a blessing to them. And Father, we pray for our nation. We even pray for our world at this time. Father, we ask that you would have mercy upon us. This is one invisible virus that has had such an impact upon us. How vulnerable we are as people. What a vulnerable world we are. We think we have it all together under control. But one small thing, and it's, it's shaken very badly. Father, we pray that you would bring the gospel, the good news of faith and hope into this world, Lord. We pray for our leaders, that you will give them wisdom. We pray that you, they will give, you will give them a heart also to seek you, Father, publicly and privately, Lord. We pray that your word will go out at this time and you will equip us to be able ministers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I think we're going to sing God is so good. Is that right? We're going to sing God is so good. And as we sing this, we're going to sing God is so good. He died for me. Um, and uh, let's let, let's really get into these words. Maybe if you're in your room uh, by yourself or with your family, you could even stand up now and just sing these simple words together. <laughs> 